It's not enough that we got a new model in the AI image generation space. We now have yet another option for AI video generation. It looks like 2025 is going to be the year for AI video. However, the great thing about this new release is that this model is open source. And what's more, this model could actually compete with the likes of Runway and Dream Machine. Now, the question is being open source, can we run it on our local computer? We're going to find that out in today's video. Let's just dive right in. So the new model is released by Genmo, Mochi One. Now it's currently in a preview state, meaning that it's not the final release. However, based on what they've shown so far, it's already an impressive model. And I definitely think it's not very far off from competing with Luma Dream Machine, Kling and Hyrule. Maybe not runway, but it's not far off either. So we can see here a couple of examples are being streamed. The quality looks absolutely phenomenal. Great fidelity, great level of detail. Those waves do look a little bit blurry, but overall I'm impressed just by these initial demonstrations. Fantastically, as I mentioned, it's open source and it comes with the Apache 2.0 license, which means that it should be available and free for commercial use, which is more than I can say for a lot of the recent image generation models we've been getting lately. The current version that's been released, the preview one, has been trained with 480p, but they do have a HD one coming out later this year, which will allow us to generate with up to 720p video. Here they talk a little bit about the funding that they've gotten and what's especially impressive is the team behind it because we've got core members from the DDPM team, denoising diffusion probabilistic models, Dream Fusion, which is a Google project, and Emu Video, which is a Google project. So definitely people who have worked on well-funded projects and probably have had a great wealth of experience in doing AI generation. If we look over here in the evaluations, they claim that the model has phenomenal prompt adherence, better than even Kling and Luma Dream Machine, and better motion quality than all the other models, up to par with Kling, and Runway ML Gen 3. We'll have to try it out and find out. Now, they do mention a few limitations over here. It's a living and evolving checkpoint. Is this model AGI? They do mention here that it is 480p and the current model is trained a lot more for photorealistic styles, which means we won't be getting any animations or anime style stuff today. However, because it is open source, it can be trained and can be customized for all of these different styles. So I'm very excited to see that. They do have a playground that they've set up, which you can check out later, where you can just go in, drop your prompt and start generating. But that one does seem to have some safe and aligned ethical guidelines. However, they do mention a little bit further here that the model is open and hackable. So let's see what the community can come up with. Uh, this is the main reason why they've made it open source is they actually want to see what we can all come up with. This could spell the end for Cornhub. Here they talk a little bit about how they handle the compression. It's a lot of it happens in the Ve, so it's very Ve heavy and it's a 10 billion parameter model. They use the T5 XXL model, just like Stable Diffusion 3 and Flux. So that seems to be a trend happening uh, more frequently in models. And that's pretty much it. There is one big caveat that they do mention. And if we come on over to their GitHub, there's a little bit more information along with a few additional demonstrations. However, the hardware requirements are unfortunately for H100 GPUs. Unless you've got an AI server farm in that basement of yours, you're not gonna be running this model, or are you? The good news is, our good friend Kijai has actually released a quantized version that will work on a 24 gigabyte GPU. So we're gonna show you guys how to do that a little later in this video. Before that, let's jump on over to the playground, which you'll find in the link in the description down below. Pretty standard, just like Luma Dream Machine, you can drop in your prompt here and you'll get a bunch of videos. The main thing I'm going to mention over here is that the model does not have image to video. So it's going to be great to play around with it with text to video. But the truth of the matter is, if you want to create anything that's a little bit more lengthy, you're going to need image to video. Creating the images will allow you to have your consistent characters, maintain that look and feel across different images and use that to animate your story. However, if we look here, starting with text to video, the initial impressions are very impressive. We can see here Pepe Guardiola enjoying the carnival. Bit of weirdness happening here and definitely not Pep Guardiola, but thoroughly entertaining. Oh, I remember seeing this one. This one was really impressive. So this is the cameras kind of flying through the city following this burger. The sequence is absolutely phenomenal. There's very little warping and it, it looks very intentional. Very impressive coming from the model. Okay, this looks like some pretty good stock footage. The model does still have a bit of weirdness with people here. We can see some kind of 
strangeness happening here that I think Hyluol and Kling and Runway have managed to sort out. It's still a bit of work to be done, but again, with it being open source, so many people can put time and energy into this we can potentially get something amazing. Here we go. This one worked out really well. Very stable, great facial details. So much like Flux and Stable Diffusion 3, when the person is smaller in the frame, that's where the issues start to run into. Right over here again, a little bit smaller in the frame. You do see a bit of blurring and weirdness over here, but pretty much good fidelity so far. Yeah, this is interesting. So they did say that the model is not suited for anime and animations, but this is a pretty good anime style video, like something out of a video game. Little weirdness happening here with the weapon. I'm Batman. I'm short Batman. Little short. And yeah, those are some examples from the playground. But I know what you guys are here for. You want that comfy UI installation. So let's go in and check it out. Now, the installation is not for the faint hearted. It's not that complicated, but it does require a little bit of comfort with installing custom nodes and installing a few custom pips. If you're comfortable doing that, go ahead and proceed. If not, you may require additional help. I suggest you drop by our Discord and hopefully someone there can answer any questions that you've got. As usual, I will be using RunPod where I have a 4090 setup, but again, this is the same process on your own machine, whether you're using Windows, Mac, Linux. If you do want to use RunPod, please use the link down below. It gives me a little bit of extra credit, which helps me make these videos. And I have a template down below, which lets you get comfy UI up and running with just one click. So the first thing you're going to do is I have a workflow down below, which should be available free for everyone to use. Go ahead and drag that into your comfy UI and you'll be presented with a bunch of nodes that look like this. If you're a regular user of comfy UI and you think going to install missing custom nodes will sort you out, you would be wrong. The nodes in question are not yet available on Comfy UI Manager. However, if you're watching this in a few days or in a few weeks from when the video was initially published, they might already be available, in which case your life should be a lot easier. However, if you're watching this immediately upon release, you will need to follow these steps. The first thing you're going to do is head on over to the Mochi Wrapper GitHub, which again, the link is down below. And you're going to grab over here where it says code, clone, you're gonna copy this. Now there's two ways to go about this. The way that I went about it is I set myself up so that I could install via Git URL. That link we just copied, you can drop it in here and it will install it for you in custom nodes. However, you may encounter an error that mentions a security issue. If you do have that issue, you need to go into your comfy UI folder, go to custom nodes, comfy UI manager, and look for the config.ini file. Go ahead and open that in your favorite text editor. And you want, you're gonna wanna change your security level to weak. Now, this is not for everyone. What is happening here? We are lowering the security features of Comfy UI. This is typically medium by default if you're using the dash listen flag because it means that other people can use your URL, get into your Comfy UI and start changing different settings and so on. So remember that, change it back to medium when you're done or if you don't wanna keep this feature open and you just wanna use it whenever you're installing something, if you don't wanna go into the folder and git clone it and so on. So I've done that and I'm able to now go into install via git URL, up in the URL, click okay and it'll start installing it for you. Once it's done, you'll get a notice down here to tell you to restart. But what if you don't wanna do this? What if you don't wanna lower your security? Well, you can do this the old fashioned way. Open up your custom nodes folder. Depending on whether you're on Windows, Linux or Mac, you're gonna to wanna to open a terminal and navigate navigate into that folder. Use your CD or right click and open your command line in the folder. Use the process for your platform of choice. What you want is that on your command line, you will see the path for workspace, comfy UI, custom nodes. That's how you'll know you're in the node. If you're on Windows, you might want to do dir to see a list of everything in that folder to make sure that you're in the right folder. Once you're here, just do git clone, drop in the URL and it will download the folder for you. Once you've done that, you're going to need to go into the folder. You can do that by doing CD comfy UI mochi wrapper, which should work if you know how to type. Unlike me, I'm just gonna be lazy, open up the folder and just open a new terminal. This is one of the reasons why I like working in RunPod because I can just open a terminal easily like this. Once you're inside your comfy UI mochi wrapper folder, go ahead and do pip install dash r requirements.txt and this will install the node for you. However, you're not quite done yet. Once you've done that, it will automatically install the node for you. You're also going to want to install, again, there's two ways to do this. Since we're already in the terminal, I'll show you this way and then I'll show you how to do it from within the Comfy UI Manager. So you wanna do pip install Sage Attention, press enter and that will install Sage Attention for you. And then what you're gonna to wanna to do is another pip install, this specific version of Torch. Now I should have mentioned this earlier, 
it, it's my bad, I forgot. If you have another version of Torch installed, and this version is going to cause conflicts and issues, again, if you're an advanced user, you might know that it does, I recommend running the Mochi wrapper in a separate comfy UI installation with its own virtual environment using v Venv or Conda. However, if you're like me and this is a relatively clean environment, you can go ahead and do this. And this will install a custom version of Torch that is suitable for Mochi. And again, I will put the commands for this down in the description below so that you don't have to go around hunting for it. And there we go. You might see a couple of errors here, but when I saw them before, I was still able to use Comfy in the nodes without a problem. If you wanna do all of this from within Comfy UI, meaning you don't wanna come into the folder and use the terminal, you can do that by installing a pip package. First do Sage Attention, press okay. That will install, it'll ask you to restart. And then you can do this one and it should install it. Any errors or problems that you run into here, fall back and use the terminal method I showed you guys earlier. Once that's done, go ahead and restart your instance. In this case on RunPod, I'm just gonna restart the whole thing. And once you're in, you should see that all of the nodes are now no longer red. In my case, VHS decided to be a bit naughty. So let's go ahead and reinstall that as well. And there you have it, we have the workflow. Now there's a couple of things that we need to jump into and have a look. Make sure that you have a T5 clip encoder here. I have the T5 XXL, I'm gonna use the FP8. And over here, you have a node called Download Mochi Mod. In here, you'll see the quantized GGUF versions, a Q8 and a Q4. The Q8 works on a 4090, I've tested it. The videos that you're seeing running through here, I uh, will edit them in later. These are all made with the Q8. There is also a Q4, which should run, I think on a 12 or 16 gigabyte VRAM video card. If you have tested it out, please do leave it in the comments below. I'll pin it so that everybody else can know what is the minimum GPU requirement for the Q4. Whichever one you select, when you queue up a prompt, it will download the model and start generating a video. Please make sure as well that you set your precision to the FP8 one. There's an FP8 and an FP8 fast. I think this one runs a little bit faster. If you're working on 24 gigs or less, if you're working with more than 24 gigs, you might be able to pull off the quantize with an FP16. The other thing to note as well is the attention mode. It defaults to SDPA, but I have seen that if you change it to Sage Attention, the image can be completely different. If you do have a powerful GPU, please come by the Discord, drop your work and share your work. I love seeing what you guys come up with. And then everything else here is defaulted for 96 frames, which should give you about five seconds-ish. Here you can see it's a 480p. Oh, so there we go, 49 frames. If you wanna go longer, again, you can adjust this. Keep in mind that the more you push it, the more frames you have, the more GPU requirement you're gonna have. Even if the requirements are still pretty high, it gives us a great starting point for a pretty phenomenal local video model. So what did you guys think? As usual, if you found this video helpful, please like and subscribe. And if you really want to support the channel, please come by my Patreon. Your support there is really what makes these videos possible. I couldn't do it without you guys. So please come by and support. We oftentimes have a whole bunch of special resources for all of the patrons and you get the videos ad free. Finally, the videos that you've seen me generate, I have been using from a prompt database that we use a lot here, Prompt Crafters. If you want to check it out, there's a link down below. Thanks so much, and I'll catch you guys in the next one.